All right, guys, welcome to the Freeze Response 201. So today I want to talk about, let's try not to get too close to the camera here, um, the reasons why we end up in a freeze, what the purpose is. Last time we talked about just basic how to, how to break out of freeze. This is a stage two video. If you are still in stage one, use your judgment. I do not encourage you to watch this video. If you think you're in stage two, or you want to understand the reasons behind why freeze happens, I welcome you to watch this. If it gets triggering, please just step away. Come back to it later. So the freeze response is a protective measure that when it's in this context of limbic impairment, it protects us from ourselves when we don't know where our limits are. That usually happens when we've overworked ourselves. Pushing ourselves, the pattern of pushing is the main driver behind freeze response. So I'm going to give a couple of reasons. The things that drive this, any reason that you've been pushing, meaning you have been in overdrive, you've been you've been running on stress chemistry for years, for, for months, for possibly your whole life, your limbic system is going to say, hey, you don't know how to stop and I can't do this anymore. I'm out of fuel. I'm out. I've got nothing left. I'm putting you into a freeze response so that you can't overdraw us more, right? And this can happen from a temporary overwork. I've seen this all kinds of things. It could be um, all kinds of belief systems that have us believing that we exist in service of others purely and we have to do whatever they say in order to earn their approval and be safe. I've seen this with just, you know, people who just have intense jobs. You know, I've seen, I've worked with some men who, They've just got really intense jobs. They've been working out in the heat outside, doing, you know, coaching their kids, having a family, working a really full-time job, not sleeping enough, burning the candle at both ends, going to school, all the things. And at some point the brain's just like, no can do, sir. Um, I'm gonna put you into freeze response because this is way too much, I can't do it. So, but understanding that, because freeze again often puts us in either a depression state or a, a you know, into like chronic fatigue type of space or a place where we can't do much, right? And and at first in stage one, you need to move into doing things. We need to break out of that fear. But then once you've broken the belief in freeze as just like a stage one trauma response, building a lifestyle where you honor your limits and meet your needs is necessary to stay out of freeze, which involves focusing on, ironically, and honoring your need for rest and your your true human limits. We all have needs. We all have natural boundaries or limits to our capacity and when we honor them we are limitless that's the funny thing about this when we honor the fact that we have a body and that we express ourselves through a body then we can become limitless so a couple of the patterns that i see a lot um that and, and i'm not going to give you answers for how to how to address this right now that's not really something i can do here but i just want to give you some ideas one of the ones I see so often is just this belief that work is more important than you are. We have this, this pattern that drives us and it stems from deep insecurity, not, you know, there's so much, a lot of childhood trauma can drive a lot of this. Um, just experiences of scarcity growing up, not having enough. We can put work as so much more important than we are that we're willing to sacrifice our own well-being for work. And that doesn't work, obviously, because then we can't work. So you and your well-being are more important than work guaranteed. And I will make, I will answer how, how to make that shift. Cause it can be a little, it's, it, it's a kind of a mind twist that one. Um, overworking yourself for any reason, even if it was a temporary thing. And if you had a, you know, super busy season of life or something, for some reason, um, for some of us that can be having kids, it can be a work thing. It can be a family situation, but if you had a really intense time, a lot of times the brain will go into freeze after that, because it was like, yo, you are not honoring my limits and I'm going to honor them for you. Just turn that off. Um, Trying to earn love is a sneaky one because a lot of us, we will push ourselves, push ourselves. This is deep and it's common though to exercise, to work, to achieve, to be smart, to be successful so that someone will love us, so that our parents will accept us, so that our partner will accept us or whatever. Trying to prove that we're enough, that we're good enough. You are innately lovable. We'll talk about that more, but that's a big one. Not knowing and honoring our limits. A lot of times we just never were taught that you need sleep that you, you know, a lot of times if you were raised in a family where there's a lot of um, emphasis on hard work being like a virtue or a really good thing, we just aren't taught about how to take care of ourselves. Most of us aren't taught how to take care of ourselves, how to take care of our bodies and, and our brains and what they need. So quick jump to then, what are some of the needs that we can focus on meeting to create this lifestyle? Um, 
A strong value system is one. Understanding what rest is is another. Rest is any state where you're in parasympathetic. So cultivating space and time for connection. Connection is rest for play, whether that's watching movies or playing board games with someone or watching a baseball game with somebody or whatever, just any form of play at all, coloring, rolling around on the floor and making animal noises. It's one of my favorite favorites. Um, dose chemistry. You need dose. You need dose. So cultivating a lifestyle where you work in dose, and that's, again, this is the deeper work, but cultivating a lifestyle where you can stay in dose is big. Um, slowness. We need slowness. You are designed to live out there in nature where there are no alarm clocks and deadlines except the sun and the seasons. There is an innate, if you watch living things out there, they do everything slowly. And it takes time to get there, but cultivating a life of slowness is a big antidote to freeze. Um, and the last one that's most important, and again, I really want to talk about this more at another point, is developing a strong value system. When we encounter challenges and we have a strong sense of who we are, what we value in life, um, whether we value, I'll just, I'm going to use myself as an example because it's easiest. Like I really value service. I really value love. I value freedom, healing people, helping humanity as a whole, um, being a good mother, you know, working on building a life for the people that I love. Nature, rest, sleep, meditation. I love, you know, my spirituality. So those are driving forces. So if, if I encounter a struggle, if you can connect uh, an obstacle or a struggle to, okay, I'm going through this. As I say, if you have a why, you can manage anyhow. If you know what it is that your value is, you will put that will put the meaning behind it, the emotion behind it will put you into relaxation chemistry, even as you're encountering something challenging, which stabilizes your brain and nervous system. And it, it, you're encountering this from a place of empowerment and love and meaning and positive emotion, passion, instead of stress. And that is sustainable for your brain and nervous system. So identifying and creating a strong value system of what it is that you care about in life, what you want your legacy to be, what do you want your life to be a testimony to? What's worth it, struggling for, for you personally? What's worth it? Identifying and developing those things and starting to live them will help so that when we encounter struggles where we're both balancing rest and also, okay, how can I help myself be more resilient to the stressors that are necessary and be choosing them from a place of agency and authenticity? And that will keep you in dose so that you do not have to... Um, bop around and play with that freeze response because it's not the most fun friend to have um, in your life. So just a quick overview for stage two. Love you guys. I hope this was informative and I'll see you soon.